Welcome to this episode of the Million Dollar Mastermind. I'm Larry Wydell, and before we get started, if you want to know exactly how to win again and again, go to wydellonwinning.com forward slash webinar now to watch something I've put together for you. Now let's get going into this episode of Million Dollar Mastermind. I'm here this afternoon with Mark Lickfett, and he's punishing himself looking out on the Pacific Ocean out there in Malibu, California. Hello, Mark. Hi, Larry. Good to be here. It's great to have you here. Mark is a, it appears to be a serial entrepreneur, but he has most recently started a company called Knife Aid in 2019. And within the first year or so, he's on Shark Tank and he walks away with a $500,000 deal for 20% of the company. And uh, it looked like uh, the company's closing in on being, the end of last year, closing in on $3 million in valuation, which is incredible. And so Mark, welcome, man. Thanks so much. And how did, talk about a little bit about your background, because people, people need to know that you did not grow up with everything easy for you. You know, you had uh, the hurdles to overcome just like the rest of us. So let people know where you came from and, and why uh, uh, it's so exciting that you've been able to do what you've been able to do. Um, yes, sir. so where I came from, that's actually a tough question because I'm sort of from all over Europe. So my, my dad is a Swede, my mom is German, I spent a long time in Germany, uh, sometime in Finland, Sweden, England, Switzerland. So it's kind of hard to say, I, I guess I'm from Europe mainly. Um, and my, yeah, and it's, it's really, my dad is, is very much a corporate man. So for me, going into entrepreneurship was far from obvious. Um, I've seen kind of how the corporate life has mistreated my dad. And that gave me a sort of an incentive not to go down that route. But I started out in entrepreneurship in, in corporate anyway. And then in, in 99, the first uh, kind of dot com, or 98, the first dot com wave, I, I kind of took the plunge and started my first business um, with, with the guy I met in university. So that's kind of set me off on that trajectory of, of entrepreneurship and especially tech, kind of tech enabled entrepreneurship. What were you interested in growing up, uh, Mark? What did you get your degree in? What are, what are things that captivated your, your interest? Um, I, I have the, the, I have a, an MBA um, from, from Stockholm School of Economics and a, a BA with a focus on business as well. So I, it was kind of business um, that I studied and I've, I've always loved business. I, for a while, I, I thought, because I've also always loved cars and kind of tinkering with things for a while, I, I thought I'd become an engineer. But I, then I just thought how much math was involved and I changed my mind and went for business instead. Um, I, and I did, I did spend a little time working in the car industry as well, automotive, which I really enjoyed, but it was actually also the sort of corporate world where I, it actually kind of made me lose my love for cars. So I, I got out of that, um, but I still love my cars. So now it's much more of a hobby. <clears throat> and, I, and I do try to, quite a few of the businesses I've had, they actually have a manufacturing aspect to it. So I, I, that's, I think, the engineering, tinkering side of things. I like businesses that actually have a sort of a tangible so the engineering factory production kind of part to them. Now, what did you mean when you say you saw your father, what corporate life did to your father? What was the word you used? How corporate it abused your father or, or what? It yeah, they, they, they did those things when, when um, especially kind of when he was a bit older and I became more aware where they did this sort of corporate uh, chess games where sort of they took people they wanted to get rid of, but they couldn't lay off. They moved them into subsidiary spun off that company and then closed it down to avoid the, the rules for having to make them redundant. And it's just this sort of how he was never really in charge of what was going on. And there were always the forces that will be and there was politics. And, and so he could never be, he, he was never the master of his life. He, he could never take charge, but other people really decided things he had no impact over or influence over. It's kind of like being a country inside the European Union, don't you think? I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'd agree with that from a European point of view, but to some extent, to some extent it is. Yeah, and then, and you know, can kind of see it. I mean, there, there are enough things, I think, us entrepreneurs, you kind of, there, there are all the, 
there's there all the rules and regulations and the, the taxes and there's all that stuff we just have to live with and, and work with. But then having having a boss that makes st stupid decisions and makes you do things or having budgets cut without there being, being any discussion about why they're being cut and no chance to even argue your case. It was all that where, where it, it just, I found it just looking from the outside in, I just found it really shocking. And I know my, my dad is such a good guy and he could have brought so much more to the table, but they just wouldn't let him. Well, you know, I'm glad this came up because I don't think I talk about it enough on here. That is the, uh, for some people it's perfect. Uh, I've got a uh, brother-in-law and I've got different friends that uh, work for the government or work inside corporations. And for some people it's, it's okay, but for a huge majority of really talented, motivated people, it is uh, not, let's just say, well, number one, it's not that fulfilling, but it also not that rewarding in terms of being able to exercise your judgment, uh, be creative, move forward. And then, like you say, you have, you know, you can work hard for a particular boss in a particular department. And then all of a sudden that boss is gone and the person that saw all of your effort for maybe the last 15 years, he's gone. And then maybe they shut down that department, like you talk about with your dad, you know, they, they kind of move it over to the side. And then it's like, it was like, uh, why was I, you know, on my loyalty? I, I thought this was going to pay off for me, but everybody who would know what price I paid, they're all gone. <laughs> and so, go ahead. Hey. Listen, there's a lot of information online, but there aren't a lot of people who have actually done something. In my case, I've actually built a successful business that's accrued over $5 billion in assets under management and has done well even during trying time. Now, if you want to know exactly how I've done this, go to whiteellenwinning.com forward slash webinar now. I've compressed a decade of learning into five short weeks just for those of you who want to give yourself an incredible advantage and are tired of waiting and watching others move up. No, and I, I, I so agree. And I, I did have that experience because in, in my first company that I started in 99, we, we did amazingly well. It was a crazy ride, especially this was, I was still in my 20s and, and sort of 150 staff reporting to me and just a big a, a really exciting journey but then obviously we had we had the dot-com crash um and we, we managed to save the company and sold it but for hardly any money at all and i was very burned out so i actually did go end up working corporate and that's when i joined the major german car manufacturer and i ended up working corporate and it was exactly that experience that i saw from my dad i experienced again and i think what, what drove me crazy was that i knew for my career it makes more sense to spend 60% managing my managers and 40% on the customer. So for me, that, that was the biggest waste, waste really is to say that, that really, I, it's not sensible for me to use more than 40% to understand the market, understand the product, understand the customers, because really the only thing that matters is that my bosses are happy. So 60% of my energy went that way. And that for me is just so skewed and such a, a waste of resources. Um, and that, I think it's and it's different corporations are, are very different and, and all the examples are different. I mean, I think maybe German, there, there's, German, there might be a bit, bit more hierarchy and, and it might be a bit more traditional. So it's, I think it's relative and much like you say, Larry, it's some, some, for some people it's great, some corporations are great, but I think my dad's experience in my own, they, they definitely, well, I'd much rather do my own thing with all the downsides that brings with it. You know, and so the point, the point we're talking about here is the fact that you know how you are and you know if you're the kind of person who can put up with that stuff and just would rather have the security and put up with a lot of being treated uh, uh, casually, you know, and, and not really appreciated and not really rewarded uh, in that kind of world. You know, the bigger the company, the more impersonal it becomes, and it's not like they single you out. It's just, you have this big machinery and you're just one of the gears inside there. Nobody really is paying attention to you because they're employees too. <laughs> and they, they're they being treated the same way most of the time. And they're well, looking out for themselves. And you cover each other's asses. I mean, that's very much what happens as well. I mean, you kind of, you all stick in, you're in the same boat. And so you cover for each other. Um, yeah, so it's a totally different mindset. Well, the other thing inside there, and not, you know, 
why not beat a dead horse? Uh, the thing is that what happens is you see a lack of courage because the people who will step out and take a bold stand, uh, you know, are usually the ones crushed because let's face it, most of the time you try new ideas, you have to sort through a bunch of them to find the real winner. You know, it's not like nobody's got a hundred percent track record on coming up with great ideas, but if you're not continuing to try and come up with ideas, you're never going to come up with anything great. And the corporate world really damns you to hell for uh, taking on the, the responsibility and, and the uh, uh, leadership of a new program when it doesn't work out. They don't really say, well, it wasn't your fault. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of times uh, they're looking for somebody to blame. And usually the guys who are you're working for, you know, they don't want to take them away. No. And so it, it's frustrating for someone who can see a thousand ways the company can be more productive, but they can't do anything about it. And I guess what I would say, uh, what you and I are saying here, Mark, is that uh, if we had a message coming out of this uh, uh, little time together would be people need, you need to, to come to a conclusion. It may be tough for you to be in business for yourself. It may be scary. It may be frightening uh, living on a commission or living off, you know, nothing guaranteed and starting a new, new thing. And everyone looks at you and everyone says, no, that'll never happen. As bad as that is, you've got to come to the conclusion about whether or not uh, you could ever tolerate working inside of a corporation or inside a job job. And if you can't, then you got to make what you got to make your thing work and not apologize about it. And so Mark, do you have anything to say on that subject? Um, yeah, and I, I think there is, I mean, yeah, to, to balance out the discussion in a way on that topic is, is there is obviously the flip side, which, which I've also suffered is, is really that it is much, much harder to maintain good life work balance being an entrepreneur. So I think, I mean, that's one of the things as well where, where I think it's that it's, so I think it's a little bit maybe through life and through the different phases of life that, that one might change their mind and kind of dip in and out of corporate maybe or just making that assessment as well to say that maybe maybe my, my hobbies, my family, my health, whatever it might be is, is more important to me and a corporate corporate world might make it easier to balance the two. Um, so that's part of it. And then I think for myself, I, I really love this idea of taking big risks in, in the 20s. I think anyone who's thinking about what to do in their 20s, because it's so different for me if I gamble now with two kids, with a house, with financial obligations, my risk averseness is obviously much, much higher. And in a way, kind of corporate is more tempting now than it's ever been. But in the 20s, I would say when, when people, yeah, you can live off nothing and just have spaghetti and butter all day long and it's, you can take risks and you don't really have that much to lose. So it's, um, I think it's probably worth trying. I've, I've also learned quite a bit in corporate. You can take all sorts of ideas and it's, it's almost a matter of maybe trying it to find out what it's really like rather than just think about it until the cows come home. Yeah, and the thing is to realize you always have other options. It's kind of like sign up for the military. You know, you do a two-year tour of duty, a four-year tour of duty, and you're going to learn some discipline and learn some things. And, uh, you know, you're going to get your act together, but that doesn't mean you have to be in it for the rest of your life. Working yes. for a corporation, it can be great for a period of time. Maybe you get in a situation that's great long-term, but you need to realize you don't have to be a, a, a prisoner in that situation if it's not fulfilling for you. And, uh, I like what you said about taking big risk in your 20s. One thing about when you take, you know, it's like, if you're going to take a risk, take it now. If you're in your 20s, take, take it now. If you're in your 30s, just say your, it's, it's your, take it now. Because the more you know, the more longer you wait past a certain point, the more you're going to hesitate. And, you know, you can't win in business by hesitating and delay you know you have to check things out a little bit and do some research but mainly you got to keep moving and so i liked it where did that idea of taking big risk in your 20s come to you i mean it's, it's um i'm trying to think of what 
the guy is called. It's a quote. It's a quote from I think one of the guys who started the started US Today, um, where he says, sort of, in your twenties, risk all you can. In your what is thirties, learn all you can. In your forties, earn all you can. In your fifties, lead all you can. And in your sixties, try and get out. Um, so, so it's a quote I read. I don't know, thirty years ago, probably in a, in a business book. Um, uh -huh. And and I and I think I so I so agree with it. And I try to do quite a bit of mentoring and coaching of younger people. And I really think this whole, much like you say, this sort of hesitation that people have. The, the older we get, the more we we hesitate. So I, I love talking to younger people about it because they're more willing to just take a plunge. And I, I I so agree with you. It's so I think it's it's much better a half good decision today than a really bad or really good decision three months down the line. It's it's kind of just get moving, keep moving. Um, so, so I totally agree. And I think younger people are better at that. Um, and, and people just get so risk averse with age. Many that, of them. That is a perfect summary of why you want to keep moving. You want to go. And until you go, you're not going to know. You're always going to doubt. So thanks so much. If you enjoyed what you've heard and are dead serious about finding out for yourself exactly how this works, in the real world, I've taken the most valuable business lessons I've learned over 40 years and put them into something for you to watch. Go to whiteellenwinning.com forward slash webinar now in order to move up as fast as possible. I'm Larry Whitell, and I run the Million Dollar Mastermind. Go, go, go.